Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the Big Oggy Bakehouse. Um, this afternoon we are going French, believe it or not. Uh, my French was never great. I Bonjour. Was, yeah, I was absolutely rubbish at it. So, um, but as far as I'm aware, we are making potato dolphin moi. So I believe, so have you, you told believe. me. John's on camera as you can Zou hear. Alors. <laughs> so basically it's you could call it potatoes gratin, more or less. It's very finely sliced potatoes. Um, I don't know if you're as old as I am, but when I was little, sometimes my mum used to cut scallops. So these would be classed as thin scallops. Potato scallops. Yeah, yep. not thick like they used to be, like chip type things, but these are sliced as thinly as you can do it comfortably. If you've got a mandolin, use a mandolin. Don't do them too thinly though, otherwise they'll just, you won't see any potato slices. We haven't got a mandolin because I'm frightened to death of them. Yeah, so I've just stood here and cut these by hand. And I wasn't watching. So, um, so what we basically need is, it's an American recipe that I'm following. So we have got cups. These are American style cups. We're lucky, we've got all these kind of things. Um, and actually on the cups, it has milliliters um, converted so I can tell you what you need with regards to the wet stuff with the cheese that was a bit more tricky because they wanted two and a half cups well to be fair this is a guesstimate sort of um, recipe because you're just going to keep layering stuff exactly. so it doesn't matter about, about 15 ounces we've got of cheese round about that yeah and ours is a mix of gouda or gouda that one yeah. gouda and cheddar um, they recommend best 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 really is gruyere yeah we did some davening french french again see french well we've got so far you've got american dutch english and a bit of french yeah yeah so this, this is, is a, this is a mashup yeah mashup so to start off with you need double cream and it has to be double cream full fat job not light stuff here this is a full fat stick to your bings recipe but it's worth it lovely so you need one and a half cups of that yep of double cream and that amounts to 360 mils approximately if you Pretty want to do it in mils you need 30 grams of butter um melted has to be melted they're saying unsalted, I don't oh. bother with unsalted butters oh. butter. You need two nice fat cloves of garlic, and I'm going to, um, it says minced, so grated, so I'm gonna grate that in a second. You need potatoes, now your potatoes are important. You need, for the UK, something like Mary's Piper or King Edward's. Yep. You need a floury potato, because when it's soaked in all the cream and butter and cheese, you want it to go all nice and soft. Whereas if you use something like um, a waxy potato, like Vivaldi or something along those lines, you will just get slices of potato with nothing stuck to it. Cheese sauce. Yeah basically yep. so you need a good this is maris piper um you need salt pepper to taste a little bit of thyme well, and obviously some fresh in the garden but it's dying yeah out it's now, dying so back so we've got a little bit it's dried or fresh if you're using fresh use a bit more it's not really. brilliant but you just need a little bit for a taste really and your cheese which john said is about 14 about, ounces about 14 to 15 ounces yeah but again you're just layering stuff so you know I would suggest that you grate your own cheese though because ready grated cheese from the supermarket comes with a starch added to it to stop it sticking and that also prevents it melting properly so that, that's just a little tip there okay you can use pretty much any cheese as long as it's a melty yeah, one as long as it'll melt it yeah. doesn't really matter and it obviously depends how strong you like it or not as the case may be before you go any further, it was something you were going to tell people was how to cut the potatoes. Okay, so, so we don't it. have a mandolin because John's petrified of the things. I've actually never had a knife accident to this day, yeah, touch well, wood. There's always so that What I did with the potatoes was I cut, as you can see, they're square all of a sudden because I cut a couple of slices off the bottom, turned them up onto their edge to make a firm base 
and then slice them thinly. Just makes them stable. Absolutely, but be careful with your fingers. So that almost like thick crisps is yeah. the texture. My, my other tip for that is obviously, I peeled the potatoes earlier, and so you dried them. Yes, I did dry them. So you don't want them too wet because obviously you're going to make a sauce anyway. Okay, so let's crack on. Layer it up, girl. Layer it up. Okay, so first off, you take your cream and you add your melted butter into the cream. Like so. And you add your minced garlic into there as well. That's two cloves gone in. And then you mix it until it's all combined. There. Obviously you don't whip it too much because you don't want your cream to go thick, like, you know, whipped up cream. Yeah, if you whip it too much, it'll turn the butter. So, you need a nice dish. I'm using the deepish one because I'm not sure how many layers I'm gonna get out of this. Yeah, the sandwiches are good. So, um, a nice deep dish. And then you start with your potatoes. So all you do is layer in your potatoes. Slightly overlap them. Like that. In a strange way, it's a bit like a lasagna. You're laying, oh, that one went to laying the up the starchy bit. Are they slippery, love? They are a little bit slippy. They're wild. They haven't got to be too pretty with this. It's just getting a fairly even layer. Yeah, and it's all going to melt down and be lush anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But you need to try and work pretty smart now because obviously you're potatoes are not in water so that would be my first layer there so now you pour a third of this mixture over your potatoes like that you add a little bit of salt Little bit of pepper. Always do your seasoning. You, you can't go back and re-season afterwards, so just you know, keep doing the layers. Sprinkle a little bit of thyme, doesn't really matter how much, and then your cheese. You're gonna to want to do this three times. So you're gonna do thirds on your ingredients really. That's the aim. Okay, so that's the first one done, and then you go back and you do it again. So. So that's our final level of potato put in. Um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we've got quite a few little bits on this top layer, but it, it really doesn't matter. You can put it as pretty or as rustic as you like. You're gonna have to cut it to eat it anyway. So with the top layer then, you pour what's left of your cream mixture over the top again, just like you did before. So currently you've got three layers of potato, two layers of cheese and three layers of creamy, buttery mix. So there's no top layer of cheese at this point? At, not at this point. There will be, but not right now. And there is a reason for that. So get all your garlicky, creamy goodness out of the jug. All flavour. Like that. One last go with the seasoning, a little bit of salt. Bit, a bit of pepper. What's left of my thyme. So now it needs to go into an oven at 180 degrees Celsius 
um, you're going to need to cover it if you've got a lid with your dish that's fine if not use some foil I'm going to use foil it goes into the oven and we're going to bake it for an hour and 15 minutes then we're going to bring it out take the foil top off or the top off whatever you're using sprinkle the last little bit of your cheese on the top and put it back in uncovered for another 10 to 15 minutes or so until you get your cheese nice and bubbly and caramelizedy brown if that's what you like or just bubbly if that's all you want really and that's as simple as it is um, it's not a difficult dish there's a lot of prep involved initially because of having to peel all your potatoes and stuff but it is so worth it and especially with winter coming it's one of those dishes that is a real comfort food what, one of our favorites it really is one is. of our favorites and we're having ours with lamb chops and nice. broccoli and carrots so I'll show you in an hour and 15 okay so it's been about an hour and 15 minutes and i'm just going to get out the potatoes and take the lid off put the final cheese on the top and put it back in for the final 15 minutes see what it looks like yum yep kind of what we expected Still very pale. It smells delish. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Um, where's my little knife? Just want to check the potatoes. Yeah, they're nicely and soft. So the last thing is just the last little bit of cheese to go on the top. Just sprinkle that on. And back in it goes for the final 15 to 20 minutes. I'll cut it for you after and show you what it looks like, hopefully. Okay, so it's now had an hour and a half and it is finished, finite. Um, it smells wonderful. It's one of those things you wish you had smelly vision because it's sort of cheesy and garlicky and buttery and all those yummy But not nice overly things. garlicky, so don't no. panic about it. No, don't panic. Massive garlic thing. So I'll try and cut a slice out. Yeah, we Whether think it, yeah, it, it may need to be a little bit cooler before you actually try and possibly. get a slice. It could be just like a molten load of potato and cheesy goo, which is kind of what it is really. But we have prepared this for our tea. And so it's got to come out so that but I can it, go it on it could be car crash television. Try to get a piece out of it, something like this. Because in the end, it's not really like a solid lump. It's, it's, it is cheesy potato. And it will stuff. firm up the cooler it gets because yeah. of the cheese in it again. So let's see if I can get a piece but out. Right now, it's just come out. Well, that's not too bad, actually. That's pretty good. There you go. One potato dauphin wah. Enjoy everybody. Come again soon. Like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, do all those things. Join our sister channel, Big Oggy Cornwall, and obviously Big Oggy Golf if you're into golf or not, as the case may be. It's usually quite fun anyway. So um, we'll see you all again soon, and bye for now.